Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpent. And if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I am very, very, very low on voice. I don't even know if I can make it to the end of this, but I have to tell you this. I have to. I cannot let, I cannot let you not know about this. So the XRP lawsuit, judge seals evidence that could prove SEC lied to court. I repeat, judge seals evidence that could prove SEC lied to court. Now, why would the judge do that? Judge Nedbert has granted the motion of an interim basis as the court may reconsider its ruling when it considers the merits of the underlying motion. So Judge Sarah Nedburn has ruled in favor of Ripple's request to seal Exhibit A and Exhibit B contained in the defendant's response to the SEC submission. Why would Ripple seal something that could prove the SEC lied? Unless it's about settling. It's about a settlement. And there have been so much noise going on around a middle of November settlement. Why would Ripple do this? So there are, the SEC was ordered to deliver the three documents after Ripple's successful motion to compel. The documents include the January 28, 2019 email SEC forum on digital assets, the October 25, 2018 email meeting between the SEC staff and industry participants on digital assets, and September 9, 2019 email chain on distributed ledger technology firms request for possible no action relief. Now the SEC claims these documents are privileged under the deliberative privilege process, including the one where the SEC told a third party to analyze its digital asset under the framework of Hinman's speech. That document is likely to put further pressure on the SEC's position that Hinman's speech was not official SEC policy, but only his personal opinions. Besides the SEC's misstep in court, Ripple can use these documents to further pursue its fair notice defense giving the agency seemingly contradictory positions in regard to the regulatory guidance and enforcement. So Ripple could prove SEC lied to court about Hinman's personal opinions. They could prove that. This could be all about, or this could all be all about to be wrapped up. And it looks like the, the SEC is being put in a corner where even if they may not want to, they might need to, to save face. Now, this is exciting. This is really exciting because while we were, if you only a few weeks back, looking at the possibility of this dragging out till March 2022, this could be wrapped up this month. And, and again, we've been down this road before. We will keep investigating, but all signs are starting to point that way. Now, there are some interesting chart patterns that are forming in XRP. And in particular, this gigantic triangle pattern that has been forming since April. And if you look at the time span of how long that's been going, that's been going for a long time. Like when we reached a dollar ninety eight, seems like ages ago now. And when this pops, it will go, and it will go very, very, very fast. Now this triangle pattern is almost broken. And then we are really, really going to see a party. And I think that potentially XRP could be the beginner of an old coin super season. That there could, could well happen, right? So XRP kicks off a super cycle for the old coins. Again, there's a lot of variables. It could all be for nothing. This could all be dragged out further and further and further. But it is all starting to point towards a settlement happening sooner rather than later. And of course, we'll talk about, you know, the price, the support levels, you know, 106, 96, uh, key resistance levels at $1.20 and then all that. We'll talk about that today, of course. Now, Ripple's partner, Novity, enables XRP BTC with crypto spend Visa card. So yet again, you know, Australia being in the highlights with an ETF launching soon, a crypto ETF launching in Australia, Novity Payments in Australia begins to promote crypto spend visa. 
The crypto spam visa card will support XRP, BTC, BTCH, and ET, ETH, and LTC. Sorry, BCH. And that's exciting, right? Again, Novity is a company that uses Ripple XRP for on demand liquidity already and begins promoting its card. And this is just the beginning, right? We're going to see a lot more of this in 2022. We're going to see a lot more of this in 2023 and beyond. Now, I do have this to play from you in regards to what Brad thinks when it comes to the on demand. Uh, um, liquidity and just in general that how big of a role Middle East will play for Ripple. What additional momentum have you been able to build into the, the Ripple growth story? Have you been able to come to any new agreements? Because a, a lot of the cross-border payments, the big channels come through this part of the world. It's really true. I mean, this is a major centerpiece of remittance uh, networks and certainly the immigrant populations here in uh, the Middle East and certainly here in the kingdom between India, Pakistan, the Philippines. And so you know, these have always been populations which pay very high fees for their remittance traffic. And what we're focused on is bringing those down. The, the Middle East has been one of our fastest growing regions. We've grown network activity for Ripple enabled payments 5X year on year here in the Middle East. It's our fastest growing region. And I think it really is only just getting started because it is such a center point as you described. What stood out to you in the last couple of months in terms of the adoption of some of the cryptocurrencies? We've had a pretty impressive rally in Bitcoin again, yeah. uh, but it's kind of trickled through the, the wider crypto space. What would you take away from that? Well, I, I take a, a macro long-term view. You know, it's very clear that where we've started maybe almost 10 years ago with crypto really being a, a fringe and edge case and where it's now become mainstream. Uh, you know, the, the number of people who are holding crypto globally continues to grow very, very quickly. And the believers in how we can use these technologies for real benefit, not for just the speculative dynamics associated with those who may speculate as investors, what have you, but really in, as Ripple is using, these technologies can dramatically improve the efficiency of things like cross-border payments. And th those today can be very inefficient by speed and cost. And right. we can make them real time and very inexpensive. I mean, that that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I think he touched on some very, very good points there um, in regards to the, you know, the way that uh, on-demand on, on liquidity assists assist the world and, and has a real use case. And that's where the, the conversation around uh, meme coins and, and real coins, uh, again, comes to fruition that at the end of the day, if you want to be in this long term, you need to be with projects that solve real world problems. And, and Ripple solves one of, one of the, if not the biggest problem of all, which is on-demand liquidity. And that's why we're here on a nightly basis talking about Ripple. Now, is it a coincidence, right? I'm about to show you some drawings and some charts, right? Is it a coincidence that everything is pointing towards the middle of November case settlement and all these rumors that are talking about? And then when you look at the chart, it does look like a middle of November is when the price will break out. If we overlay what's happened in the past, this is what it looks like. And could it, could it all just magically all align and then we're off? I think November will shock people. I think November... I think Ripple in November will shock a lot of people. Not you and I, because we know we, we know about this and so we know the benefits of it. But the road to sixteen dollars and then you know that drop off that we will have, I think you know it, it is starting to the picture is starting to look really, really clear from a technical perspective about where we are headed. We've had to wait. We, you and I have had to wait a long time. But I think our patience is finally going to be rewarded. And it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but it's coming. It's coming. Let's jump into a time. Let's have a look at some indicators. Okay, so as we begin to look at uh, XRP today, we're looking at the at the daily. So from a daily perspective, we're sitting at $1.10. The MACD is almost, almost in a bullish segment. The RSI is sitting towards the middle. It is looking really, really, really good, ready to go. Like ready, ready, ready to really kick off the, finally, you know, the XRP party. But we do have to wait for $1.15, consolidation above $1.15. Remember that, remember that at the moment. 
But when we look at this right, we look at the MACD, we look at the RSI, we look at where we're at at the moment uh, from an hourly perspective, it, it is all starting to rev up and rev up really, really nicely. The, uh, on the four hour, it is above the moving average 100 and the MACD is on a bullish. On the 12 hour, it is bullish. And I think the daily will soon kick off uh, into the MACD being on a bullish segment. And we're really gonna start to see things take off in a, in a big, big way. And so the month of November, I think the month of November will be will shock a lot of people what, what XRP will do in November. But let's have a look at some drawings. Now, why is the excitement building up? Well, the excitement is building up because of the six months consolidation that have been going on into this triangular pattern that is look that looks like it's going to really blow up. And, th and that's where the excitement comes from. And so patience, you know, patience, patience we've had, but now we kick off and kick off a major cycle um, coming up for, for XRP. And so at the end of this, of course, you know, we've got $1.40, big, big resistance there, $1.60 is big resistance, and $1.98 is big resistance to 20. There will be a lot of resistance before we go to about 350, consolidate for a little bit, and then we go off to 450. And, and so this kind of pattern is looking like, you know, the likelihood of the first steps that we will take. Then when you take into account the, the possibilities of having legal clarity from a case settlement, that will be huge. But what we'll do first is we'll get towards 450, have a nice consolidation. Then we start to head towards double digits where, you know, that 12 to $16 range comes from. And then from there, we will just keep building and building and building. And I am gonna be with you, voice or no voice, I'm gonna be with you every step of the way. I made it, I'm so glad. If you learned something new today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as always. Thank you, and I look forward to see you on the next one.